online is not the content. The product online is you. The product online are the eyeballs looking at that content and as much information about how to influence the hands connected to those eyeballs as possible. Cruel social media remarks. Facebook comments have been pouring in after four people died while hiking. You're dealing with an addictive generation. This is a big time bomb ticking. These kids who commit suicide, you go look at their Instagrams, you would have no clue. Mr. Zuckerberg, would you be comfortable sharing with us the name of the hotel you stayed in last night? Um. Uh. No. People who spend more time on Facebook suffer higher rates of depression than people who spend less time on Facebook. It'll destroy relationships, it'll cost time, and it'll cost money, and it'll make your life worse. To be human means that you are persuadable in every single moment. It, it doesn't matter what language you speak, it doesn't matter how intelligent you are, it's not about what someone knows, it's about how your mind actually works. We now know that many of the major social media companies hire individuals called attention engineers who borrow principles from Las Vegas casino gambling, among other places to try to make these products as addictive as possible. We are all vulnerable to social approval. We really care what other people think of us. When you upload a new photo of yourself on Facebook, that's a moment where our mind is very vulnerable to knowing what other people think of my new profile photo. And so when we get new likes on our profile photo, Facebook knowing this could actually message me and say, oh, you have new likes on your profile photo. It knows that we'll be vulnerable to that moment because we all really care about when we're tagged in a photo or when we have a new profile photo. I mean, I think we can all feel it. And it's as if we've been infected. It's as if we've, you know, they've drilled a hole in the back of our head and now they've injected the virus and now we walk around searching for feedback using social media. We know that engagement with social media and our cell phones releases a chemical called dopamine. Dopamine is the exact same chemical that makes us feel good when we smoke, when we drink, and when we gamble. In other words, it's highly, highly addictive. You have an entire generation that has access to an addictive, numbing chemical called dopamine through social media and cell phones as they're going through the high stress. They don't have the coping mechanisms to deal with stress. So when significant stress starts to show up in their lives, they're not turning to a person, they're turning to social media, they're turning to these things which offer temporary relief. We know, the science is clear, we know that people who spend more time on Facebook suffer higher rates of depression than people who spend less time on Facebook. That's a problem, that's an addiction. If you're sitting in a meeting with people you're supposed to be listening to and speaking and you put your phone on the table, you're not just, you're just not that important. To so you have a, a, an addicted generation that doesn't have the, the skill set to ask for help. Combined with the fact that they're so good at Facebook and Instagram, they're good at putting filters on everything. So they're good at showing you how smart and strong they are. These kids who commit suicide, you go look at their Instagrams, you would have no clue that they were depressed. People look like they have a much better life than they really do. People are posting pictures of when they're really happy. They're modifying those pictures to be better looking. People basically seem they're way better looking than they basically really are. And they're way happier seeming than they really are. So if you look at everyone on Instagram, you might think, all these happy, beautiful people, and I'm not that good looking and I'm not happy. So I'm a suck. Some of the happiest seeming people, actually some of the saddest people in reality. Social media isn't real, but you don't ever see real life. The 99% of our lives, the behind the scenes, the unglamorous, unfiltered, day-to-day, -day bland normality. And you end up comparing your behind the scenes to other people's fake highlight reels and using others as a mirror or benchmark for how you should look, how successful you should be, or how you should live. You'll become your happiest self when you stop putting pressure on yourself to be more like someone else and they know that this causes depression. They're injecting things into your head that you didn't ask for. Our lives are becoming more transparent, just inevitably, it's just pulling us. It'll destroy relationships, it'll cost time, and it'll cost money, and it'll make your life worse. If you've messaged anybody this week, would you share with us the names of the people you've messaged? No.